Okay, so it's Boise and Lenny again. We're talking about um, the other, the second type of contract verbs. We talked about the alpha contract verbs, the epsilon contract verbs are the ones that are derived from second declension nouns, mm -hmm. like of the town of the five logos or philos. Uh, unfortunately, the book chooses as its example um, a verb that has no <laughs> known. Um, noun derived from which it is derived okay but but generally speaking that's what they come from okay um, they picked one that's an exception the, the verb that's the their example is the verb poi echo you know i epsilon omega okay again that's the uncontracted form of the first person singular of the present active indicative okay the actual form that you're going to see is poyo in which the epsilon and the omega contract Omicron, Omicron, and the Omega regular, rather, are the first person singular, and you get your circumflex ending. So, um, in general, here we want to reduce the complexity of this to a simple rule that's given on um, that what Belisi has already written up there. That is the EO uh, thematic vowel contrast, that's e -O, uh, o E O in the singular, O E E in the singular, and O E O in the plural, sorry. Um, becomes an alternation between EI and OU. So let's just do this out loud. If we have LUO, LUE, LUE, when it comes to, to POYEO, we have POYO, POYES, POYE. And if we have in the plural, LU AMEN, LU ETA, LU USE, in POYEO, we've got POY UMEN, POY ETA, POY USE. Okay. You can see very simply that you get that alternation. And uh, it's transparent in the imperfect, um, in the subjunctive. What happens is because of the double thematic vowel, that, that is that you have omega and eta, what happens is that you get, you, you do, in the case of poieto, you do get an alternation and a difference between the present indicative and the present subjunctive. So that's poio, poies with an eta, and poie with an eta and an ior subscript. Then you get poiomen, poieta, poiosi. So there, the alternation in the subjunctive, you can make this another one, please see, is the EO alternation, the, the, the omega, the, the eta omega alternation it gets preserved, okay? It doesn't really change, it stays as omega and eta, okay? But you're gonna get circumflexes over those etas and omegas, and you're gonna get a, a, an iota subscript like the way you do in the regular subjunctive. So, so luo, luis, lue, um, becomes poyo, poyes, poye, um, as as uh, as you have in the, in the other forms. It's only the accent really that's different. Um, in the imperfect, again, the imperfect is the most transparent forms for thematic vowels. So there you see epoyun, epoyus, epoyes, epoye, epoyumen, epoyeta, epoyun, just like eluan, elues, eluan, eluete. Poyun, with an acute accent on the e, on the iota. No, no circumflex there. Epoyes. No circumflex. No, 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 because the ending is e s, right? Yep. yep. Poyes epoye, and then um, and then epoyumen, epoyeta, epoyun. Oops. Go too fast. Yeah, I'm not too fast. That's it. At point when the supplement's over the EI. And then at point U. Right, you get, you're going to have a circumflex over the iota in the first person singular and over in the third person plural. All the circumflex. An, an acute, rather, over the, over the OI. A poyun in both of those forms. Okay? Because uh, 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 on, still, you can still have recessive accent. It wasn't that, it wasn't on the, on the contracting vowel. As you can see in the end, the end it was a long vowel. So, um, the, 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 in, the, in the optative and then the, um, and in the participles, remember the thematic vowel is an O. So, what you're going to get is poyme. Same as luoime, um, but you're going to get a circumflex over the oi because it's contracted with the e. 
So poi oime, poi ois, poi oi is going to be your form. No different from the from the from the regular verbs except for the certain parts of the accent and so forth in the plural. Poi oime, poi ois, poi oi, poi oi, then poi oi, poi oi, te poi oi, and then you also have the other the other forms. Poi oi and poi oi is poi oi, poi oi and then poi oi. So um, the the infinitive is what you would expect, poyain, with an epsilon iota and a suffix. Um, the participle is poyon, poyusa, poyun. You want to write that one down? Poyon, poyusa, poyun is the active participle. The middle ones, it's going to be because of the grammatic problem. Poyon, this is active, present active participle, poyon, poyusa. Right, and the second one's over the OU. And the U, which has a, also a, a, a second one's over the U. Poyun mm -hmm. DOS with an acute accent. Uh, the second one's over the OU, rather, is the general Poyun DOS. Um, the infinitive set is Poyain. The, the, the middle participle is going to be Poyumanos. Those are the forms that you see contraction in, the present and the, um, and the imperfect forms of the subjunctive, the indicative, and the optimate, um, the present form of the participle and the infinitive. Um, okay, I think that's all we want to say about this.